welcome back to part two of the SR20. We're gonna do top end stuff, time and chain, probably lower oil pan, everything that we need to finish this off mechanically. Um, things that I did do off of camera, I went ahead and got the rear main on there. It's just silicone and then hammer in your new rear main seal. This one was a used one, so I know he's gonna have to change that in the future, but I do need it on there right now. So I'm gonna start with the front cover and the time and chain. So you got an O-ring right here that you need to look out for as well as your timing cover with the oil pan, or with the oil pump. If you're having an aftermarket pump, this is kind of important. You need to have this top face milled because if you have your block milled and this isn't, this is gonna end up being taller than your block. So he did have this machine to his block. Um, I like to wire brush the edges of it where the silicone seats or sits because I like for it to have something to bite on. And then I will brake clean this whole thing with non-chlorinated. Don't use chlorinated. It leaves like a like a film. Same thing with the block. Get it cleaned up if you need to wire brush it. I like to put it at TDC right now. This kind of sucks because we're going to end up having to put that cover on and then zip tie the chain out. And then we're going to end up moving the chain through the head. Because you can go ahead and put the head on. But then you got to set the cover on there. It just gets kind of stupid just the way they want you to do this. So I'm going to do it like I did mine. And I'll show you all how I did that. Alrighty guys, another thing I want to note down really quickly on your timing chain, you'll have a chrome link if you have an OEM time chain, and then two blue links. Both the blue links are going to be your cams, and then your chrome link will be your crankshaft. And I like to put a little bit of some kind of paint on them, that way you see it. You may have two different kinds of bolts. These are the two different bolts. So you may have a short collared one and a long collared one, as well as the overall bolt. This one is shorter. And that's because the longer one with the deep collar or deep shoulder sits in the swing guide. This guide will pivot. This is what your tensioner actually sits on. Of course it's up, wrong orientation, but you get what I'm saying. Now, if you have a guide, you have another guide that's like this. Now there's two types of this guide. Um, he got the kit, sorry, the chair squeaking. He got the kit that doesn't use bolts with a collar. See how that's all flat? So I am having to switch them. This bolt, we don't have the Allen bolts with this because he had the other kind of guide which I believe that one is our slack guide, which just means that it's not tensioned. And then luckily, um, I have some different bolts here, which I believe these are an eight millimeter by 150 or 125, I believe. You can always take them up to ace and then rematch them if you need to. On this engine, bring this a little closer. Is Watch out, some of this may be in a mirror. I'm not sure how this is showing up. TDC. Obviously our chrome guide. There's a mark down here on the crankshaft that's on the bottom It's be on the bottom left side of the engine. That's where that mark goes Just like that Then we can just set it over like that Non slack or I mean our slack guide the one that's not tensioner. We go like this And I, I like to keep a little bit of tension technically nothing is timed yet, but we do have that lower link locked in Go ahead and start a bolt. And then I'll throw on the swing guide. Now look, this will really only go on one way. One end of it is got like a chamfer recess for the bolt. All right, now just to have this be held in spot, I'm gonna pull it, make sure I'm still on my mark. And then I'm just gonna And it's not super tensioned, but it's enough to keep it from acting all stupid. Got the zip tie off because we're not sloppy. Now I'm not tightening. These two I can tighten. Actually, that's a swing guide. I can go ahead and tighten them all. Now we can go ahead and get our front cover on. And I know that that's going to stay intact. So now I'll get my O-ring and then I'll also get my silicone on my front cover. As you can see, our chrome link is lined up with that little notch. We've got our O-ring installed. We've got silicone on our front cover. Now I'm gonna get it on. Make sure that O-ring stays in place. If you need a replacement O-ring and you can't get one local, you can use a 14 millimeter, 14 millimeter ID by 19 millimeter OD. That one on the bottom right. in our dowels a little bit.
All right, let's talk about something. I like to spray my head gaskets with copper coat. Been doing it on freaking Nissans for a long time. I like it. These Kometic gaskets, these are great gaskets. You don't have to do it. They already have a Teflon coating, but I still like to do this. It is a Permatex copper spray gasket. It's real hot, or it's real high temp. So you just coat it just like you're spray painting. Nothing too heavy to do real light coats. I like this stuff. It makes this thing real tacky. And you'll end up with a nice coating like that. Also, what you need to do is put a little dab of silicone here and a dab over here on this side of the timing cover where it meets with the block. That way, whenever the head gasket seals, when I wrote, let's make some power. Even when you do it this way, or just with dab, sometimes that'll create kind of a crease and it'll leak. So I like to do it like that. I'm gonna set the head gasket on there now. Also, make sure your head is very clean. This one was machined, so I just wiped her all off. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and get the head gasket set on there. Do not forget your head dowels. You'll not have a good time. Set the back down. You gotta get your timing chain ready. There we go. Lay your timing chain out. It's gonna try to fall again. As long as you don't have it pinched. It, and it's also like impossible for it to fall all the way down in there. But for now, what we're gonna do, so I have a ratchet just holding the timing chain. All right guys, it sucks to do with the timing chain sticking out. You just gotta pinch the guides and set it on. Um, and then make sure your dowels and everything lock in. Whenever we go to time this thing, we'll double check our time down there. We'll look from the bottom and you can barely see if that crank is still on time which it should be because it's very hard for it to come off like this. Now what I'm gonna do is I have ARP studs. You can tell the top because they have the hole, the Allen in them for quick assembly. Slide these guys down in there. Don't forget your lube on. These are all the same length. Make sure you don't have them upside down. And then you just thread them in by hand until you can't thread them in anymore. Don't use the tool on the top of the Allen because if you tighten them too much, then when you go to torque them down, it may not let them stretch properly or twist. And then next thing you know, you're breaking a stud. Also, um, while you can, you can still grab these out. Put some assembly lube on the top too. Be really careful with these 12 millimeter or 12 point uh, half inch bolts or nuts. These are a half inch, not a 13. Now you could get a socket that can do both. This claims that it's a half or a 13, but it is a little sketchy. Just be aware because you can break these things just by doing that, by using the wrong size socket on it. Keep in mind also, if you have stock head studs or stock head bolts, your torque spec's gonna be different. That's what I'm talking about. It feels really weird. It'll loosen up, completely normal. Good to go. Now I'm gonna get the shims, get the cams ready. I'm gonna go ahead and get the rockers and the shim set. I'm gonna show you how to kinda preload your uh, your lifters. That way they're not kinda real clacky on startup. The way that I like to prime my lifters is get you a little cup of oil, drop your lifter in there. I do have some assembly lube in there too. After you dunk it, it's nice to fully submerge them. Take something small like this rivet end, start poking the hole in it, try to get the air out of it. While you're filling it up too would be really good. I kinda got a small cup here, so I kinda gotta do it weird. That'll help you get a lot of the air out. Now they still may be a little loud. Coat it and then pop it in your engine. I'll show you guys how the shims go. Now keep in mind your shims are different. Luckily, he kept his in order. Now if you're switching cams or something, remember you gotta kinda re-shim your head. Lifters are in. Make sure you put some assembly lube around them and maybe put some oil down in there. And then your shims, we're on the exhaust side. They're gonna be the same per hole though. This is the one with the notch, and then that's the actual shim. So notch on left side, and then the rocker almost set on top. Keep in mind all your caps have numbers on them where they go, they'll have an I and an E for exhaust and intake, and then one, two, three, four starting at the front. Um, and then our cams, we're gonna lube up, put some assembly lube in all these journals. And uh, I'm gonna do that now and then set the rockers. I'm gonna clean the rockers, set them on there. That's pretty self-explanatory. And then we'll get the cams and start the timing process and everything else. All right guys, so the only thing you gotta do that's special on the rockers is the shim deal with the notch on it. The, I believe they call it the shim arm. And uh, so either way, the shim, the left side, the one that has a notch on it, you just need to make sure that notch lines up with that groove or that the rocker lines up with the groove. It's sat on that lifter good. All right guys, I know people have problems with the heads on SR20s. A subscriber commented, I was saying that torquing it down, it can, you know, they sometimes they're hard to do and they'll break. So on the cams, I just see my yellow mark. That's, I marked the notch and then there's the black link or the blue link. Same thing on this side. And I, the way I got the cam in 
I just held the timing chain and I kind of went at an angle. And, uh, another thing you want to do is always make sure that these little holes where the cam tie down bolts go, blow those out with compressed air, watch your face, get some assembly lube on these journals on the tops of them. Not going to hurt. Just don't get a lot of it down in the holes for the threads because then you can like hydro lock it and you'll crack it. And he does have rocker stoppers, so y'all see me installing those as well. And I'll get to it as soon as I get this assembled to kind of show you, and then we'll work it down. Um, but the main thing is all the rockers are set on right. These holes are cleaned out. Doesn't help to, or doesn't hurt to put some oil on these. I washed them with a kerosene parts washer, so they're already very free. But if these guys get real tough, they can bind on this aluminum, the steel wheel, and that'll also break them. Or they'll just break off in here. This is a kind of a bad design with those little bitty bolts. We'll literally start them all by hand. And then don't forget, I'm gonna show you how these guys go on these holes. And I clean these out with compressed air because see those little bitty holes? Make sure you clean these out because see these little holes that are on them? Sometimes they get stuff in them. This one, for instance, both of these, these first two holes were clogged up with what looked like rags. So then I blow them out as well as I parts wash or brake cleaner. The problem with the cams that people a lot of times have, I have the rocker sharpers on and the uh, camshafts in. Now what you wanna do is make sure all of your rockers are even, they're nice and wig like they're perfectly even. And then you want to go in this sequence. So run this one down a little bit. Don't bottom anything out. Run this one down a little bit. Oh wait, sorry. Go over here. Exhaust side, by the way. And if anything's hard, real hard to do, don't do it. And I'm just literally going until they like stop. Same thing over here. Go till it's like like that. I'm not putting any force because it's evening out that cam cap. And now all the caps are sitting flush. And I have done that on both sides. And then we'll follow the torque procedure and I may put that torque procedure on screen if I remember. And that way you can uh, uh, see the torque numbers that I'm doing as well as the sequence. But everything's down even. Our dots are still on there with our links and I had already looked from below, you can still see it. We're good. This slack, it's gonna this slack, it's gonna come out of that. All right, guys. I want to make a point here. This is your tensioner. If you're gonna reuse this, which they do have manual options, so don't feel like this is your only route. Let me see if I can get autofocus. So if you're gonna reuse this, just make sure you gotta reload it right. Um, this little lock-in mechanism is meant so you can put it in, and then you can hit that lock that mechanism down, or gravity will do it whenever it locks into the timing guide, and you're bolting it down. That thing will fall, and then the spring will activate. Um, in order to push this in, I'll just show you real quick. So yours will probably be like that after you remove it. In order to push it in, you have to push on this little uh, this little guy right here. It just actuates. So what you want to do is push it in real nice and straight. Actuate that thing. Push it in straight all the way. And then latch it like that. That way whenever you get ready. Don't forget your gasket, by the way. Whenever you're ready, it'll go ahead and do it. Go ahead and run it in nice and even. Very happy with how this is turning out. Extremely. I feel like this thing's gonna be freaking rock solid. Especially with those rocker stoppers on there. All right guys, gonna take advantage here. Get a couple things on that are not on yet, like the water pump, as well as the water neck. So it doesn't have a valve cover gasket yet, so I'm just basically setting this on there kind of for looks. As well as protection, kind of. I know, I know though that whenever I flip it, she's gonna probably leak some oil out of this thing, and that's fine. Got that side taped up. Water pumps on. Alrighty, guys. I am done for the night. This is gonna conclude your SR20 long block assembly. This thing is not wanting to load, and this kid is very excited. It's the dude that owns the engine. So anyways, I'm done for the night. I'm tired. We got the long block done. All it needs is a valve cover gasket, oil sump, and then the lower oil pan. And that's gonna button it. Oh, and the turbo, and then the intake, but he's doing that. I will probably do a video on how to remove studs like that with a welder, probably. It's easiest. But everything's sealed up. Super excited, super duper excited. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comments. I try to answer every single comment. Like, subscribe, whatever you guys wanna do. If you liked the video, if this helped, um, I can help you with any SR needs. I have all the factory service stuff. If you need help, um, please message me. Um, I don't mind doing the SR stuff at all. Um, other than that, guys, follow my Instagram and 
my TikTok if you want to. There's like funny car TikToks on there. This stuff is in the description. Um, anyways, I don't like to self-advertise that much. But I appreciate everything you guys do. And I guess enjoy. Look out for some more stuff.